Second Peter, or Second Corinthians 9 and verse 8 says that God will make all grace abound unto you, so that in all ways and at all times you will have everything that you need so that you would abound in every good work. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8, God will make all grace abound unto you, so that in all things and in all ways you will have all that you need, so that you can abound in every good work. Another translation says that you will excel in everything that you do, God has made grace abound unto you. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's abounding to you. It's abounding to you. Yeah, yeah. Our subject today, as we focus on the, the foundational text of 2 Corinthians uh, 9 and 8, we'll also be looking at uh, Romans uh, 4 and 25. Uh, but our foundational text begs and directs us to lift up this as our subject today on Resurrection Day, on Easter Sunday in the year of our Lord 20 and 15. The subject today for your hearing and for your understanding is no matter what people say, don't let go. No matter what people say, don't let go. Somebody showing their age today, that's an old song from, from back in the day. No matter what people say, don't let go. What are we talking about? Well, I'm not going to let go of number one, and we'll get right into five reasons not to let go. Five reasons. The five is the number of grace. Five is the number of grace. Grace translated means power. So that when God said to, 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 to Paul, my grace is sufficient, he's saying that all my power is sufficient and is available to you. So that when we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. That God will make all grace abound to you. God will make all of his power. The same power that Jesus Christ resurrected from the grave with. With all power. With all grace. That same grace is made available to us. It wasn't available to the Old Testament saints. But it's made available to us. And so five reasons not to let go. Number one is. No matter what people say, I'm not going to let go because God has given us His power. God has given us His grace. So I won't let go of my belief that I have in God. I won't let go of that strong belief that, that has been influenced by my parents, my mother, my father, my, my, my relatives. It's been influenced by my community. It's been influenced by my teachers. That same belief system that my mind has... And you know, everybody has a brain, but in the brain there is a mind, and within that mind, it's something called belief, belief systems. What do you believe? Within your belief systems, there, there are influences, there are stimuli, there are things that motivate and direct you in a particular way, a preference, this way or that way. And within those stimuli, within those influences, there is what is called an agenda. So everybody that is living has their own agenda. And we are born with it. It's called self-preservation. It's, self, it's called protecting me. It's, it's, called, it's called, I'm not going to let you abuse me. I'm not going to let you take advantage of me. I'm going to protect myself. That same belief system that you have fostered, no matter who you are, where you come from, that same belief system, don't let go of it if it's in God, our creator. Don't let go of that belief system that... That, that, that pro provokes and provides trust, trust in such a way that it's unconditional, that it's based on the experiences that you've had with God. He's pulled you through. He's brought you from so far. That same belief that fosters the trust in God, don't let go, no matter what people say. Don't let go of your belief in God, of your trust in God. That same belief, that same trust that motivates, that, that permeates your faith. Which, oh by the way, is another way of saying the corresponding action. Don't let go of that corresponding action that is based on what you believe. And since you believe in God, let your corresponding action be always to bring glory to God. Always to know 
that you are a victor and not a victim. Amen. No matter what people say, don't let go of your belief in God, of your trust in God, of the corresponding action, the corresponding faith in God. Don't let go. Number two, the second reason that you must not let go is found in Romans 4 and 25. It says that Jesus died for our sins and he rose for our justification. Romans 4, 25. Jesus died for our sins, your sins, my sins, and he rose for our justification. What does that mean? That means that we are the righteousness of God. Can you say that? We are the righteousness of God. Through Christ Jesus. You just quoted Romans 3, 22. So Romans 4, 25 says that Jesus died for our sins and rose for our justification. And Romans 3, 22 says that that, that we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. That is to say, through the action of Jesus, through his going to Calvary and, and being crucified and dead and was buried. But then he rose by that very act, by that very fact, we are made right. The New Living Translation says we are made right with God so that in everything we do, when we place our faith and God, no matter who we are, where we come from, what we did, no matter, no matter, no matter, you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Romans 4.25. So don't let go. No matter what people say, don't let go of your belief, your trust, your faith. Don't let go of this fact action made us justified and transformed us to be the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. What is through Christ Jesus? What is it when we put our faith, when we put our corresponding action, when we believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and, and is the, the, the living uh, uh, God incarnate the, the, the living possessor of, of all power, of all authority, who sits at the right hand of God, which symbolizes authority and over everything of all creation. What does faith in Jesus mean? That's simply broken down. Simply means that all of our actions and all of our decisions that we make in, in life, when it's based on recognizing what Jesus Christ did, it means that no matter what people say, that I won't let go of my continual thanksgiving and gratitude for what Christ did for me, for saving my life, for, for giving me eternal guarantee that I will spend the rest of all time with God in the New Jerusalem. It means that it's not about what we have done. It's about always lifting Jesus high. There's a song in the Caribbean that says, Lift Jesus higher, higher and higher. Lift him up for the world to see. He said, If I be lifted, lifted up from the earth, I will draw men on to me. You can imagine steel hands going with that and a nice bass going with that. Ooh, wow. Wow, talk about church. Takes me back, takes me back. But that's what we got going on here at Union Community, too. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Did not our choir bless us? Yeah, yeah. You, you wonder why I say come and minister to us, choir? Oh, my yeah. Lord, that was an awesome ministry moment right there in song. Praise God for our choir. Give God some praise for our choir. Amen. I know I'm not the only one. Amen. There is a billboard um, on 95 heading north over by... JTB area, uh, south side there, and it, and it used to say, it said that when you focus on your problems, you will see more problems. It said when you focus on your problems, you will see more problems. But when you focus on solutions, you will see more options, more opportunities.
So I kind of amended and edited it to say that when you focus on your problems, yes, you're going to see more problems. That's a true fact right there. But I want to say when you focus on Jesus, who gives you the solutions to all your cares and all your matters and all your ills, you will guarantee see more solutions and more options and more opportunities for Second Chronicles 20 and 20 says, believe on the Lord your God that you might be established. Believe also on his prophets that you might prosper. I need to add in here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you don't believe that somebody can do for you, they're not going to be able to do for you. That's where credibility comes into play. That's where street, street creds, I can't even say it. It's, um, that's where credibility comes into place. That's why you should study to show yourself approved. The workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Because when you stand up, and people aren't going to listen to your words. They're going to look at your life, your, your actions. What are you doing? Praise God. But the Holy Spirit just wanted me to insert there. But So number one, in five reasons why you don't let go, is because God has given us his grace, his power. Number two, you're not going to let go because God has justified us. That he has transformed us by Christ's action to be the, the, the righteousness of God through Christ's actions. And thirdly, we go to back to Romans 3 and 22, which says that we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. And, and when I repeat that and when I say that, some of you might be saying, that's really nice scripture, and that's nice to hear, but right now today, even on Resurrection Day, I don't feel like that good of a Christian. I don't feel like I'm that deserving of, of all God has done for me. I'm not even feeling that good health-wise, and I, I'm not definitely not feeling that good wealth-wise, so I, I, I like and I hear what you're saying, and I'm, I'm with you, amen, and I say, and I like what I'm hearing, but you got you to gotta come a little bit more than that. So, may I go a little deeper with this? No matter what people say, don't let go. Because right after Romans 3 and 22, which says that uh, uh, we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short or come short of the glory of God. So you may be sitting there thinking that you don't measure up, but guess what? Nobody measured up. That's why it's what Christ did and not what we did that really matters. So it's not about what you have done in your past. It's not about the sins or the offenses and all the mess and, and all the trouble and all the stuff that you have done, that we have done in our past. That doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that you need to know today, and you should know that no matter what people say, don't let go because it doesn't matter what you've done. The only thing that matters is what Christ did for you. What Christ did for us all. That's a great place to say amen. amen. Number four, number four, let's retire. No matter what people say, I won't let go because I'm going to hold fast to my profession. That's what Hebrews 10 and 23 says. It says, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith. Let us hold fast to the profession of our corresponding action to what we believe in. To really break it down for those of you taking notes. Amen. So I'm not going to let go because God has given me a profession. That is a declaration. That is, that is something to speak. That is something to say. That is something to declare to anyone who wants to hear. First, it's what I need to hear in my own heart. So I'm not going to let go because the ritualistic, methodical repetition of speaking God's goodness in my life, the repetition of speaking the word of God, that I am the right, I am in right standing with God when I put my faith in Jesus Christ, when I put my corresponding and my decisions and, and my choices, when I line them up with the, the things of God, the positive love, joy, peace, the, 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 the fruit of the Spirit, when I line it up with God, I won't 
let go, but it's important to understand why you have to lay hold and keep your profession. But that is the declaration, that is the speaking, that is the articulation of what you believe. Speaking God's word, why is it important? Well, here's a good example right here. Even in our worship service, every ritual, every act, every prayer, every song, everything, at the core of it is declaring God's goodness and who God is. It's not focusing on the filthy rags and the sins and the disappointments and the frustrations and the illness and the sickness and the bereavement that we may be going through, but it's focusing on Christ Jesus. And so we satisfy Hebrews 10, 23, when we profess, when we declare, even in our worship service, celebrating, celebrating the goodness of God in our lives and what Christ did. He transformed us from wretched sinners into the righteousness of God through his action. Amen. And fifth and last point of why you should not let go. In regards to our subject, no matter what people say, I won't let go. And I, and, I, and, I, and I transform the don't let go to I won't let go. So that as you remember the hearing of this sermon, you will make that same declaration. No matter what people say, I won't let go. That's a personal declaration. That's a personal stance. That's a personal evidence of what you are standing upon. You can do whatever you want. You can talk about me. You can, you can do this to me. You can do that to me. But I am not letting go of God's unchanging hand. The key point, though, is lifted up in Romans 8 and 38 and verse 39. It says that I am convinced. Somebody say, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. That neither death nor life nor the angels, nor demons. Another translation says, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any power. Yeah, you can repeat with me. Come on, go ahead. Nor any power, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature on the face of this earth or anywhere. I'm adding there. I'm paraphrasing there. Amen. Amen will be able to separate me from the love of God. Well, why are we finishing and ending up on Romans 8.38? Hmm. Well, on this Resurrection Sunday of 2015, I want to draw a closure, your attention to focusing on God's great love. And not be deceived or distracted when you hear that scripture of Romans 8.38 that nothing will separate us from the love of God. 39. That's not talking about what you're able to do. That's not talking about how, how, how great and intellectual and educated or smart or, 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 or how many friends you have or Facebook. It's, it's not talking about you. Because truth be told, You only know what you would do when you when you put in that situation. But the truth of the matter is that God's love is unchangeable. And so it's not focusing that scripture, Romans 8, 38 and 39, it's not focusing on what we are going to declare and whether or not we are going to withdraw from God's love or God's presence. But it's saying no matter what people say, God's love will not change, will never move. It can never be parted and separated from us. God said it, not me. You can take that all the way to any bank. So, 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 no matter what people say, I won't let go because God has given us his grace, his power. God has justified us and transformed us to be uh, the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Uh, I won't let go because uh, God has has been so good to me and ha he has forgiven me of all my sins and, and finally I'm, I'm finally at that point now with, with, the, with the great word that I've been hearing and the, 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 the way I've been
reading and studying for myself and growing in my grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, I can now also forgive myself because I'm reminded every day that God has already forgiven me for all my sins. We come to the point now that we won't let go because God has grown and perfected our faith so much that we're going to continue to profess His goodness and His word in our lives. And we're not going to let go because God's love cannot be separated from me. And since you're listening from YouTube, amen.